Alright, so I had a question from a friend today that I wanted to answer, and it's about the orders of operation. So we have orders of operation. Okay, and so the first thing that I'd like to do is explain what the operations are, right? So, um, what are the basic all right we're talking below pre-calc what are the basic operations these would be the arithmetic operations and so the first one is we have addition the second one we have is multiplication multiplication okay and the third one we have is exponents All right. so those are our only three operations for arithmetic addition multiplication and exponents and you're like professor G you're missing three of them and uh, I'm not okay so addition alright has the additive inverse okay which is the um, additive inverse which is a notation and that notation is subtraction All right and so what we're doing in subtraction is we're actually adding the inverse so we change the sign and we add and so that's really what's going on with subtraction subtraction is a notation for multiplication of course we have the mole to Applicative inverse in inverse. I forgot the s. All right, the multiplicative inverse, and of course the multiplicative inverse is actually division. And this is where the keep it, change it, flip it rule comes from. The multiplicative inverse is to multiply by the reciprocal. So subtraction is add the opposite sign, division is multiplied by the reciprocal. So subtraction and division are actually notations for addition and multiplication, all right, by their respective inverses. Exponents is a little bit more complicated. Our, we normally think of exponents as whole numbers, and then you have radicals, which are fractional fractional exponents okay so these types of exponents right here these are whole number exponents and then radicals are fractional exponents so it's just a different way radicals are just a different way of writing exponents division is just a different way of writing multiplying by the inverse and subtraction is just a different way of writing a the um, addition by the inverse. And so radicals, division, and subtraction are all notations for add, multiply, and exponents. All right. Now this will hopefully clear up what the orders of operation are. Now once upon a time we used to teach something very very different but uh, math research currently holds that the proper order of operations are grouping symbols first and then exponents multiplication and addition as you go through them from left to right. Now most people understand that radicals, division, and subtraction are also part of the orders of operation so we put them underneath because remember division is just a notation for a multiply by the inverse and subtraction is just a notation for um, add the inverse, right? And a radical is just a different type of exponent. It's just a fractional exponent. So these guys we actually do as we come to them from left to right. So in these three groups, we do these as we come to them from left to right. Okay? So these are our actual orders of operation. All right, so we have grouping symbols. Okay, we have our exponents and all the different ways that we can write those. We have multiply, 
right? And division is just part of multiply, and then we have addition. Okay? And so if you have a radical written in your problem, you do your exponents and your radicals as you come to them from left to right. If you have division in your problem, you do the multiplication and division as you come to it from left to right. And if you have a subtraction in your problem, you do that as you come to it from left to right. Okay? So, what are the different types of grouping symbols, right? Because, you know, a long time ago we used to do <coughs> grouping symbols. Just parentheses, symbols. That's not true. Grouping symbols actually covers a whole bunch of things. Of course, it's parentheses and also brackets and braces, depending upon how many levels you have to your problem. But another type of grouping symbol that we see a lot is the fraction, all right? Sort of like, you know, if I have some stuff on top of the fraction and I have some stuff on the bottom of the fraction, there's actually a Latin word for the fraction bar, and it's called the viculum, viculum. Now, my Latin is not very good, so that may be not how you spell it, but it literally means to tie together, which is sort of the definition of a grouping symbol, right? It ties the numerator together and it ties the denominator together into two groups, the group on the top and the group on the bottom, all right? This is also true for the radical, right? So if you have a radical, this bar right here is also a veculum, and so it ties together everything inside the radical. If you've got some stuff like uh, b squared minus 4ac, that would be the discriminant of your uh, quadratic formula and stuff. And then, of course, the last one would be the absolute value, right? So the absolute value is an operator, and it acts just like the parentheses, uh, brackets, and braces, right? So we have all different types of grouping symbols that get tied together, okay? And then you've got multiply and divide. Oh, multiply and divide. And you want to do those as you come to them from left to right, right? Okay, so what does that look like? Well, what if you have, I don't know, 3 times 4 divided by 2? Oh, well, which one do I do first? I don't know. Well, actually, yes, you do. Because remember, you're going to do your multiplications and divisions as you come to them from left to right. So you have to multiply the 3 and the 4 together first to get 12, and then you're going to divide it by 2, and the correct answer here is 6. And that makes us happy. And, of course, if I flip it around, right, and I have uh, 4 divided by 2 times 3. I want to do the 4 divided by 2 first and get 2. And then 2 times 3 is 6. And of course that still makes us happy. It's like we're geniuses. Right? And so I'm going to get my PhD and here's my tassel. And that makes us happy. <clears throat> and then of course last but certainly not least we have addition and subtraction. And of course you're going to do that as you come to it from left to right. So if you have 4 minus 3 plus 2, you're going to do 4 minus 3 first. That's 1 plus 2 gives you 3. And that makes us happy. No. Nope. Alright. And then of course if I flip it around and I have 4 plus 3 minus 2 I'm still going to do them for, as I come to them from left to right. And so 4 plus 3 is 7. And 7 minus 2 is 5. And again, we're super geniuses, and that makes us happy. Now, exponents is our other operation, uh, but I need to save that for another video. Save for another day because the notation with the fractional exponents gets a little bit hairy and so I give my guy a little bit of hair but there it is alright so there's the orders of operation and the order in which we do them